السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those whose salah, whose prayers are accepted inshallah. From amongst those whose fasting in this month is accepted inshallah. Bearing in mind that we have not yet completed the month, really, this is a season of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive every single one of us. The one who achieves forgiveness has achieved a lot in the month of Ramadan. The hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَمَضَانَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ Destruction be upon the one who has witnessed the month of mercy and has not achieved forgiveness. The one who has seen the month of Ramadan and still did not get forgiveness. That means when the month is there, where mercy is being dished out and the forgiveness is being handed and distributed, a loser is the one who does not get from that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Also, as we commence this evening, it is important that we make mention of the hadith where Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I find the night of decree, which is Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? So he responded, Say, Allahumma innaka afuun tu hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. O Allah, you are most forgiving, you love to forgive, so forgive me. That is the most powerful dua you could make on the night of decree or Laylatul Qadr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. This evening's topic being the last topic is the, the supplications that we make to Allah, also known as dua. We all make dua. We all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because definitely He is our creator, He is the all-powerful, He owns absolutely everything and we always need to ask Him. How should we be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What, what does He say about it in the Qur'an? Remember what we are doing throughout this month, what we have done, we have completed an entire selection of topics whereby we have clustered together verses under that particular topic. So we choose a topic at random, and thereafter the verses from the Qur'an, as many as we can, translate and put into practice, give a little bit of order, try and interpret it for the listeners, for the benefit of myself, as well as everybody else. The subjects within the noble Qur'an, and what we have done this evening, inshallah, we have brought together a few verses where supplications are made mention of in the Qur'an in order to highlight the importance of the words of the Qur'an. And as we commence, we should realize one thing, and that is even the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they called out to Allah. Even the prophets of Allah, they called out to Allah. Even the angels, they call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should always be calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another issue that is very interesting. Why are the supplications of the prophets, may Allah's peace be upon them, mentioned in the Quran? There are many reasons. One of them is to show us that they used to call as well. The other is to show us the wording that they used. They used powerful wording. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make mention to us the wording that the prophets used and those words were accepted and over and above that they were granted whatever they asked for. Subhanallah. Which means if you are to use the same beautiful words that have worked in the past, there is a greater chance of the same word working inshallah. It is like a combination lock. Obviously the example I'm about to give you is slightly different, but just to bring it close to our minds. If you had a lock, 
which had a combination made out of three figures. And you started trying, you didn't know, but you thought you were clever listening to the click and the tick. And every little while you think, right, I think it's a three here. Then you go to the next one, I think it's a two. Would that work better than a person who comes to you and says, listen, I know the combination here. The reality is you would be a fool if you did not want to listen to that combination because that which has already worked to open the lock in the past, it is better for you to use the same combination. There are some combinations, maybe they tell you, look, I will give you 20 sets of combinations and inshallah one of them will work. So you try all 20, you would be much more intelligent if you tried those 20 than to start from 000 and go all the way to 999. It might, it might be one of the last figures and who knows, your luck might run out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So, these words of supplication in the Quran, they have been used by people better than us. And they have worked. So, this is why it is important we go through them and we try and memorize them in the exact wording, in the exact language, insha'Allah. And we try to supplicate, call out to Allah in the same wording, for that is indeed an act of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us our prayers. Now one might say, one might say that the prayer I have is not there. I want to ask for this. And I don't think that that is there in the Quran. Believe me, you will be shocked and amazed at, as to what type of supplications are mentioned in the Quran as well as in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sought protection from laziness, yet he was not lazy. He asked for forgiveness, yet he did not need it. He asked for guidance, yet he did not need it. He asked to be protected from credit and from debt, yet he did not need it. One of the reasons why he was made to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all these questions or all these prayers, all these supplications that he himself really did not need was because he was a perfect example for all of us. If we follow his example, we will naturally make the same supplications we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us all. Now that we've mentioned the virtue of the words that are mentioned in the Quran and the wordings of the supplications of the Prophet peace be upon him, let us go through some of the etiquettes of prayer. When you want to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you would like that prayer to be accepted, there are certain steps that you need to follow. There are certain steps that you need to follow. Just like when you want to apply, for example, to get something. You want to apply, for example, maybe to open an account somewhere at, at one of the chain stores. You need to fill in an application. There is a procedure. Without that procedure, they will not do it for you. With Allah's mercy, sometimes even without the procedure, He will give you what you want. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you follow the procedure, there is a greater likelihood that your prayers will be answered. So what is this procedure? The first thing we need to realize and understand is do good deeds before you make a dua. So when you want to make a prayer, when you want to call out to Allah in supplication, you need to first do a good deed, inshallah. Either two rakats of salah, either you've read a little bit of Quran, either you've given out a charity, either you've done some form of a good deed, and then you go to the next step. It is, there is a greater likelihood of your dua being accepted when you've just done a good deed, you helped your mother, you helped your brother, your sister, for example, your spouse and so on. You've been so good, for example, to your children and what have you. You've engaged in an act of worship, even if it means to greet someone with a smile. After that act of worship, you go to the next step. The next step is to praise your creator. Ya Allah, you are the one, you are the owner, you are the most merciful, you are the praiseworthy, you are the one who can give me what I want. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. And this is why normally when we start, we start off by saying Alhamdulillah. We always say all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we've praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, we need to go to the next step. And that is to ask forgiveness for our shortcomings. Before you ask for what you want, purify your record, clean your record. When you want money to borrow from someone and you are already owing them a lot, do you think they will give you? But once you've cleared your record with them, there is a greater chance that they might give you. As I said, the mercy of Allah dictates that sometimes He will bypass all this and still give you what you want. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But it is best that you engage in tawbah, you repent for your sins, you look at yourself and you say, right, now I am dressed appropriately. I am a person, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, I seek your forgiveness. I will not do this again. I've committed this sin, that sin, this sin, and the other sin. Ya Allah, forgive us all, Ya Allah, for our sins, Ya Allah. Then after you have praised Allah and you have repented for your sins, you are now starting with a clean slate. When you start with a clean slate, you need to start with something known as a salah ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need to praise and salute the one who has brought all the goodness to you. I would never have been a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he did not come, subhanallah. So the mere fact that he came is a blessing. We owe him a lot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The bare minimum whilst we are starting our dua, we have sought forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali nabiyyina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. That is the bare minimum inshallah at the beginning of your dua. So that at least you know the goodness, the one who taught you who Allah is was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who taught you all the goodness you know, the salah, the spirituality, whatever you have, the Quran, all of it came through a certain medium which was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the bare minimum, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him all forms of goodness, to bless him and to elevate his status sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that, we move to the next step. Now we ask what we want to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've cleansed our slate and alhamdulillah we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is reported that we need to ask something sensible, not something foolish. If someone says, Ya Allah, drop me a gold coin from the ceiling, Ya Allah. You've done everything and now you are asking something foolish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Don't treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you are talking to a child. No ways. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which is reasonable. Which means, yes, you try to work towards the gold coin, then say, Ya Allah, I am working towards this gold, give it to me, Ya Allah. So you need to fulfill the role that Allah has put within your capacity, and the rest is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who says, Ya Allah, give me money, for example, let's use that example, because people want a lot of money. May Allah grant us wealth, and inshallah bless us within that wealth, inshallah, and give us wealth where he knows it is better for us, inshallah. So if a person wants money and he says, Ya Allah, give me money, give me money, give me money. And he continues saying that and he is sleeping all day, all night. He is a fool because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, play your role and I will do the rest for you. So what you do, you tie your camel and then you say, Ya Allah, protect my camel. You lock your car, then you say, Ya Allah, protect my car. You lock the gate, then you say, Ya Allah, protect my house. But you leave everything open, then you say, Ya Allah, look after it. I'm going to sleep. Allahu Akbar. You are insulting your creator by saying, Ya Allah, you want me to play a role, but I'm not going to do that. You do everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should ask that which is rational. And we should remember that we have a role to play. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. Thereafter, we should only ask that which is permissible. So you don't ask Allah, Ya Allah, I'm going to rob tonight. Ya Allah, make it easy for me. May Allah protect us. You are supposed to ask Allah for that which is rational, reasonable and permissible as well. You never ask Allah to facilitate a sin for you. And let me be honest, at times Allah's mercy, Allah creates a barrier between you and sin because He knows that this sin is going to cause the downfall of this individual. So as you plan, may Allah protect us, to fornicate or to commit adultery, suddenly someone pitches up, wrong place, wrong time. You look at them and you say, hey, they spoiled my program today. Not realizing it's an angel of mercy sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we know that when we call out to Him, we will only ask that which is permissible. If you notice tonight, we said, Ya Allah, give everybody their heart's desire on condition that it pleases you. On condition that it pleases you. Because if it does not please you, Ya Allah, we don't want it. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Then... Another very powerful point which a lot of us are unaware of. When you are asking Allah, you never ever say inshallah. You don't ever insult the Creator by saying, Ya Allah, give me inshallah. That word inshallah, we don't realize. When you are asking al-jazm fi dua, you say, Ya Allah, give me, Ya Allah. 
please forgive me, Ya Allah. You will be forgiven. You don't say, Ya Allah, please forgive me if you want. No. When you are asking Allah something, you don't say, Insha'Allah. When you are asking Allah, you don't say, if you will, give it to me. No. What you can say and what you should say, Ya Allah. When you are asking for something material, you say, if it is better for me, then facilitate it for me. And if it is not good for me, keep it away from me. But when you are seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never say, if you wish. Because you are pleading with Allah. It is an insult to tell the Creator, look, I want forgiveness. But if you want, if you don't want, ah, you know what, may Allah protect us. Na'udhu billah, that's a dangerous statement. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to forgive us all and to help us choose the correct wording. So when we make a dua, you say, Ya Allah, give me if it is better for me. Ya Allah, do this for me if it is better for me. Get me married to this female if it is better for me, Ya Allah. Or to this male if it is better for me, Ya Allah. Then subhanallah, let's move on to something else. We, we should choose words which are beautiful, full of humbleness, full of humility. The best of words, Ya Allah, I plead with you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I plead with you to grant this to me, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you are the owner, Ya Allah. I am a nobody, Ya Allah. I really, I am not worth the dust beneath my feet, Ya Allah. You grant it to me, Ya Allah. Those are the type of wordings we use, not words of arrogance. We need to use beautiful words, not to say, Ya Allah, give me now. No, those type of words where we are sort of Daring the Creator, then naturally the probability of our dua being accepted will be minimized. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Thereafter, we need to be humble and down to earth. We need to be, be full of humility when we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when we are asking for rain, it is, it is reported that we need to look down, we need to be humble, we need to be thinking about the sins we've committed and how we are now regretful over them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant it to us. But an arrogant person who's got his nose stuck into the air, then he wants to say, Ya Allah, give me. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that person's dua? Do you think he wants to give them? They probably think they have more power than the creator himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from that type of pride and haughtiness. Then the next point that we need to remember is never be in a rush for your dua to be answered. Yustajabu li ahadikum ma lam yastajil. All your prayers are answered for as long as you, you are not in a rush. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what do you mean when you say being in a rush? He says, أَنْ يَقُولَ دَعَوْتُ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي I made a dua, I made so many duas, but Allah is not answering my call. A person who says that does not realize the power of his Creator. Amazing, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, don't be in a rush. He always answers your dua positively. There is no ways. You make a dua and it is rejected totally. It might not be exactly what you want, but we are taught that you get one of three things. Whenever you make a dua, you are in a win-win situation. This is a very, very important statement for us to remember. We are in the end of Ramadan. Make dua, continue supplicating, continue making your supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He will either give you exactly what you want, how you want it. MashaAllah, may Allah make us from those lucky, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are lucky. Look at how myself also sometimes we say inshallah without realizing we are not supposed to say it. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really make us from those whose duas are answered. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we need to realize is the second way. Sometimes He doesn't give you what you want exactly at the same time. Sometimes He delays it for you. He gives you at a time when it's appropriate. So sometimes it might not happen in one year or two years, but inshallah by 2011, 2012, you'll get what you want. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not keep us waiting too long. And at the same time, what happens is sometimes still on that point, He gives it to you later, maybe not in the dunya. You will get it in the akhirah. If He knows it's better for you, because He knows the past, the present and the future. The knowledge of Allah is such. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the past, He knows the present, He knows the future, what is going to happen, how it will happen. And He knows what is not going to happen if it were to happen, how it would have happened. That is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So Allah grants us from his knowledge. When he knows something is disastrous for you, he won't give it to you. Because he knows those things which are not going to happen in the future. If they were to happen exactly how they would happen, that is already in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to repeat that statement for its power in the Arabic language. يَعْلَمُ مَا كَانَ وَمَا يَكُونُ وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِذَا كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونُ Subhanallah. That is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might give it to you in the akhirah later on. Or sometimes in the akhirah He might not give you exactly what you wanted, but He will give you something even better. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you later on something better than you asked. Though with your little mind you might have thought, with us as human beings, we've got small minds compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is. وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The knowledge you have, Allah says, is minute. It is nothing. It is almost nil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes He might not give you what you want, and He might give you something better. Whether you perceive it or not, that is your business, your spirituality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Then he says, if, the, if Allah does not give you what you want, He does two things for you. When He knows it is not good for you, then He gives you something else in return for your dua in the akhirah. So you've made a dua, Ya Allah, grant me this, grant me this, grant me this. You're asking Him, Ya Allah, grant me this. He doesn't give it to you here. But that doesn't mean your dua is rejected. When you go into heaven, inshallah, through that supplication and the blessing of it and the barakah of it, He will give you a bigger reward. And He might even give you paradise just in return for the duas you are making for something else. Subhanallah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we are taught is that sometimes in your life, He can remove a calamity from your life because of a prayer you made for something else altogether. So when you make dua, Ya Allah, make me from amongst those who are wealthy, Ya Allah, so that I can spend in your path, Ya Allah. Then if he makes you wealthy, you better spend in his path, inshallah. Amen. Ya Allah, make me from amongst those who are wealthy so that I can spend in your path, Ya Allah. Sometimes if you continue making a dua and you are not yet wealthy, maybe Allah gave you good health because of that dua. Maybe Allah gave you good children. He might have made you wealthy in a different way and you don't realize, you don't understand. So it is not always exactly what we think. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the best of this world as well as the akhirah. Then it is important once you have made the dua to be steadfast. Don't lose focus. Read your salah on time. Give your zakah and so on. Do you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is in surah Yunus. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا We have answered your prayer, O Musa, O Moses, O Harun, may peace be upon them. So now be steadfast. You need to be steadfast after you make a dua. Remember one thing, Allah asks us to do certain things. And we want to ask Him to do certain things. Who needs who here? We need Allah, He doesn't need us. So Allah tells us, look, all I want you to do is dress properly, be clean, watch your tongue, stay away from falsehood and arrogance, and stay away from, from, from uh, maybe pinching and stealing. We know what is haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want you to read your five salah a day. That's all. I don't want you to do more than that. And we are saying, yeah, you know, I'm feeling lazy. You know, I, I really, I'll see you tomorrow. Allah says, dress appropriately. You can't put a scarf on your head for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you call out to Allah, you want Him to answer you like yesterday. Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, I urgently need it. Allah says, but I've been calling you all your life. Where were you? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Is it fair? It's not fair. But still with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bypasses that and He says, my, my worshiper, my slave, I love you even though you are not doing what I've asked you, I will do what you've asked me. Allahu Akbar. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to realize it's time we turn to Allah. So that at least when we raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can give us. And inshallah, He will give us. And then a very, very interesting and powerful point is, you need to know that the response has come and it will come. You must not doubt your response. In one of the three ways, it has come. It might not come the way you want it. And this brings me to a very interesting point. 
Many of us know what is istikhara when we are making a dua to say, Ya Allah, if this is better for me, make it easy for me. If it is not good for me, take it away from me. So then Allah takes it away from you. And then you start saying, but I made a dua, I made an istikhara. But Allah didn't do what was better. Allahu Akbar. That means we already decided for Allah what was better for us. Allahu Akbar. And that's a mistake a lot of us are making. We want to do something, then we make an istikhara. And we say, ya Allah, if it is not good for me, take it away from me. If it is better for me, give it to me. So then you don't get it. When you don't get it, then you still think that subhanallah, now, you know, Allah didn't do the better of the two things. Allahu Akbar. Why should we decide for the Creator? Think of that carefully. The Creator is the decider. He is the one. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that you should know that the goodness lies in whatever Allah has done. In whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really... We must be from amongst those who ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us humble and to make us from those who can realize that He calls out to us. We also need to respond when He says, What a beautiful call to success. What a beautiful call to success. And we find ourselves dashing in the other direction. Allahu Akbar. Then we say, Ya Allah, help me. You know, there's an armed robber in front of me with a gun. Allah says, but I called you to success. If you were there, you wouldn't even have been here. Allahu Akbar. Still through the mercy of Allah, He protects us. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all forms of goodness. And remember one thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His mercy creates difficulty or what we perceive as difficulty in our lives for us to raise hands. For us to raise hands to Him. Sometimes if our lives are too smooth and they are moving and flowing, what happens? We forget the Creator. When we forget the Creator, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to gently remind us. So suddenly there's a problem and we raise our hands. Sometimes it's the first time in many, many years that we've raised our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, it was a bargain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who have to be reminded to turn to Him. Rather, inshallah, let's all try and remember ourselves and let's try and remind our own selves, inshallah, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let us go through some of the du'as in the Qur'an. And I made mention at the beginning of this session that if you have any problem, any sickness, go through the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has made some powerful du'as and it's amazing how when you see the supplications of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be amazed and shocked as to the types of sicknesses he has asked for protection from. As to a lot of things that he has asked, let us try to at least purchase a booklet or listen to a disc where the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are made mention of. Let's learn them, understand them, and try your best to use the same words. Though, if you were not to use the same words, Allah still knows what is in your heart. وَيَعْرِفُ سُؤْلَهُ حَتَّى قُبَيْلَ النُّطْقِ بِالْدَعَوَاتِ Allah knows your du'a inside your heart before you utter it. Before you say it, He knows better than you how to word what you cannot word though you want it that is allah that is the power of allah so if you are really stuck for words you say ya allah in my heart there is something ya allah you know it best ya allah grant it to me allahu akbar he knows what you are talking about now let's look at the quran i'm going to mention very few because you know we can't go through every single one of them the first thing we need to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to be able to thank him to grant us the acceptance and ability to be able to thank Him. The dua mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al-Naml, as well as in Surah Al-Ahqaf, different duas, one by Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, and the other is mentioned as a dua that a man should be making when he arrives at the peak of his life. رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ O oh Allah, grant me the acceptance or the ability to be thankful to you for what you have bestowed upon me 
and upon my parents, Ya Allah, and grant me the ability to do good deeds. Because if the ability is not granted, you won't be able to do good deeds. So Ya Allah, grant me the ability to do good deeds that will earn your pleasure and count me from amongst the pious worshippers. Alhamdulillah. And in Surah Al-Ahqaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي And Ya Allah, grant me piety even in my progeny and in my offspring. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. That brings us to the next dua. Always make dua for pious progeny and for offspring and for good children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to accept that dua from us. One is to have the child. There are some from amongst us who don't have children. May Allah grant you children through His mercy. There are some who have been trying for decades and some who have been trying for longer or shorter. May Allah grant you children through His mercy. Remember, if He has decided not to give you children, surrender to the decision, it is, it is best for you. Sometimes He knows if we were to give you a child, if the child was taken away then in a very bad car accident at the age of 5 or 10, then you might not be able to take that. So as a mercy, we don't give you the child from the beginning. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes Allah doesn't want you to see a child on drugs and on this and on that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give it to you from the very beginning. And sometimes just as a test, Allah does that to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us offspring. And may He grant us offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. So let's look at the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Zakaria alayhi salam made when he was quite old and he still didn't have children. And this dua works. Believe me, it works. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. We are using words that worked in the past. Why would they not work now if we were steadfast as well? Listen to the dua in Surah Al-Anbiya. Rabbi la tadharni farda wa anta khayrul warifin. Oh Allah, do not leave me singular, Ya Allah. I need A's. Ya Allah, don't leave me singular, Ya Allah. You are the best of inheritors, Ya Allah. But I would like heirs as well, which means I need a male child, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. So that dua is a powerful dua for those who don't have offspring. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word hab. Hab meaning to give a gift. The, the, the gift of children is actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another place Allah says, Zakaria alayhi salam made a dua. Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibah. Oh Allah, grant me a gift from you as a pious offspring, Ya Allah. Let that be a gift from you, Ya Allah. So we need to ask Allah in many different wordings, inshaAllah. And Allah will grant us. Then it is important that we always make dua that we get good spouses. And we also make dua that if we have spouses, Allah makes them good inshallah and keeps them pure and makes them the coolness of our eyes. That dua, we mentioned it a few days back when we were speaking about marriage. And I spoke about the dua in Surah Al-Furqan. Then we need to understand, let's also make dua for steadfastness and for salah. Let us, let us make dua that Allah makes us from amongst those who can establish their salah. And also make dua that Allah help your children also be steadfast and also engage in salah. Listen to the dua in Surah Ibrahim, which was made mention by Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Allah, make me from amongst those who establishes salah. And even from my offspring, make them from amongst those who establish prayer, Ya Allah. Imagine he made dua for his offspring. Then he says, Oh Allah, accept my dua. And this brings us to another point. Whenever we have engaged in any act of worship, it is our duty to make a dua at the end to say, Ya Allah, accept it from us. Not that we do an act of worship, we are happy and we walk away. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam after he built the Kaaba. After he built the Kaaba and he did so many good deeds, he says, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Oh Allah, accept it from us. This is a humble act of worship. Ya Allah, accept it from us. Make it pure. Do you know when we fulfill our salah, sometimes the sincerity levels are not that grand. Sometimes they are not up to the level they are supposed to be. 
Sometimes even the mere concentration is not there. But we ask Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna. Ya Allah, these acts of worship, we are trying, Ya Allah. Accept them from us, Ya Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds. Then it is important that we also make dua for our parents. The dua for parents is mentioned in the Quran in many places. In Surah Isra, Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbayani sagheera. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents. Have mercy on my parents, Ya Allah. If they are not Muslim, Ya Allah, that mercy would dictate that you guide them to the goodness. And if they are, Ya Allah, have all other forms of mercy as well upon my parents, Ya Allah. Because they are the ones who brought me up when I was an infant, Ya Allah. And they brought me up to this age, Ya Allah, have mercy on them. Even those who've passed away, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on the parents of, from amongst us who've passed away. Then it is important that we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge. In Surah Taha, we have the verse, وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being instructed to say, O oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Imagine. So he used to constantly say, رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا O oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Every one of us, we need it more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed it. There is the dua in the Quran, Rabbi zidni ilma. Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us increase in knowledge, inshallah. Then it is also important that we make a dua that Allah make our affairs easy. Listen to the dua in Surah Taha. Rabbi shrahli sadiri. Oh Allah, oh Allah, grant me clarity of my chest, ya Allah. Open up my chest for me. Make me confident, ya Allah. Rabbi shrahli sadri. O oh Allah, increase me in confidence, Ya Allah. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Wa yassirli amri. And this issue, that, uh, this matter that I am about to undertake, make it easy for me, Ya Allah. At any matter or upon any matter, we should be making that dua. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Wa yassirli amri. O oh Allah, make this matter easy for me. Whether it is a court case, whether it is opening the door of the car, whatever it is. If we remember and if we can, why not? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you. As well as other important matters at work or at home, whatever it is. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh Allah, grant me that confidence. Wa yassirli amri. Make this easy for me, Ya Allah. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. That is a powerful dua, Ya Allah. Take out the knot from my tongue so they can understand what I want to tell them. Subhanallah. Whenever you want people to understand your words, you make this dua. Ya Allah, let them understand my message, Ya Allah. Because we are weak. Innama ju'ila lisanu ala al-fu'adi dalila. The tongue has only been made as, as a means to convey what is in the heart. But we cannot do it all the time as good as we want to. Allah can help us to achieve that. So that is why we say, وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ Ya Allah, grant us good speech or take out the, the lack of eloquence from our tongues so that at least we can be, express ourselves in a good way, Ya Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us express ourselves. That dua was made by Musa, Moses may peace be upon him, alayhi salatu was salam. Then it is also important that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy, we ask him for mercy at all times. And on top of that, we ask him to make easy for us the path of goodness, the path of guidance. We ask him to help us distinguish between right and wrong. Listen in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the youngsters, the youth who were worried about the bad environment. So they made a dua. Rabbana, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا Oh Allah, have mercy on us. Grant us mercy from you. And make easy for us the path of goodness and guidance so that we can distinguish between right and wrong and we can remain protected. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? فَضَرَبَنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَهْفِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا as a response to that dua, we sealed their ears and gave them sleep in the, in the sleeper's cave for many, many years. Now, some of the Mufassireen make mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them from the bad environment by disallowing them from even listening to evil. So when you listen to evil, you will automatically go in the wrong direction. Don't allow your ears to listen to what is bad. 
It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay away from bad people, who bad mouth, from bad words, from lyrics that will lead us astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So that is why we need to ask Allah's goodness and mercy at all times. Then it is also important that we make dua for others, not just for ourselves. I told you a few nights back that when you make a dua for someone else, the angels are saying, Ya Allah, give him even better. Allahu Akbar. So when you say, Ya Allah, give that man a beautiful house, Ya Allah, which has everything modern in it, the angels are saying, Ya Allah, give this person even better. Alhamdulillah. We should not be selfish when it comes to dua, inshallah. And this is why even the angels make dua for us. Listen to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Do you know his duas were so powerful? Allah calls him an ummah and a whole nation. He made dua for all of us. Listen to what he said. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. It is amazing how he says, Rabbi ja'al hadha baladan amina warzuq ahlahu min al-thamarati man amana minhum billahi wal yawmil akhir. Oh Allah, not just me. Oh Allah, not just me. But this entire city, this entire town, Ya Allah, make it peaceful, Ya Allah. And grant the inhabitants of this town produce and goodness and blessings and what have you. Up to today in Makkah to Mukarrama, where this dua was made, they have peace, they have stability, they have serenity, they have a sacred holiness in the city itself and at the same time over and above that they have produced galore though it doesn't grow there may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of understanding because the dua was made for someone else a dua li akhika fi dhahri al ghayb to make a dua for your brother or your sister in islam without them knowing that you've made dua for them without them knowing who you even are tonight we made dua for the suffering souls in palestine in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Somal, in Pakistan, wherever they are on the globe, we made a dua for them. Do they know us? No. Do we know them? No. What is the bond? The bond is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah That is the bond we know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So we make dua for others. It is far more likely that that dua will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another very important point, we need to make dua after doing good deeds. And I've made mention of that at the beginning of my talk, that you do a good deed, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, accept it from us. Rabbana taqabbal minna. This is why when it comes to the end of a dua, normally when you hear Rabbana taqabbal minna, you now know that the dua is almost complete. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance and understanding. Those who know the Arabic language will tell you that that is now depicting the end of the dua. Where we are saying, oh Allah, accept it from us, ya Allah. We've made a dua, we've done a good deed, ya Allah. Accept it from us. May Allah accept our salah. May He accept our fasting. May He accept our recitation and our listening to the Holy Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write our names from amongst those whom He shall free tonight. May Allah free us from the fire of Jahannam. Then it is important also that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goodness of the dunya, for the goodness of this world as well. Worldly items, yes, we need them. We ask Allah. But we should balance it with the akhirah. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةِ وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the, in the hereafter. And save us from the punishment of the fire. If you take a look at that dua, if you were to divide it into three, 33% of it is connected to this world. And 66% of it is connected to the akhirah. I am leaving out the decimals. Someone might say that makes 99. No, we are leaving out the decimals here. One third is for the dunya. Two thirds is for the akhirah. That helps us a lot. When we are making dua, let us try and keep the same ratio. Two-thirds of our dua must be connected to the eternal life. One-third connected inshallah to this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness here and goodness there as well inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us also that it is important for us to make a dua that Allah remove hatred in our hearts. Allah removes the hatreds that might be in our heart against other believers, those who have believed before us or with us. 
Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And this is a very, very important dua in Surah Al-Hashr. رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا Oh Allah, forgive us. وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ And forgive those of our brothers who have preceded us in faith. Those who came before us, those who are more faithful than us, they have preceded us in faith. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And O oh Allah, do not place in our hearts any form of hatred against those who have believed, Ya Allah. And this is why a person who has hatred in his heart for those who believe, it is a sickness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us from those type of sicknesses as well. Then it is also important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua at the time of difficulty. You have a problem. There is no one to resolve your problem. You are right, you think you are right. And someone else is wrong, they've oppressed you. Now there is no one to judge between you. Allah will be the judge. The dua to make. رَبَّنَا افْتَحْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ قَوْمِنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْفَاتِحِينَ O oh Allah, you be the judge between us and between these people here, between our people, Ya Allah. You are the best of judges, Ya Allah. Continue making that dua in your difficulty and Allah will expose who is right and who is wrong in your problem. Allahu Akbar. So that is why this dua, some of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this dua. And when they made it, it was granted to them and there was definitely a day that came when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judged between them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. Then it is important that we realize that we need to make dua to Allah as is mentioned in the Quran to protect us from being oppressive as well as to protect us from being oppressed. So there are two things. We make dua, ya Allah, protect us from oppression. But ask yourself, are you not from amongst those who oppresses others, whether it is your spouse, your children, what have you? You should remember, if you are oppressing, Allah will create someone who will oppress you. So when you are making dua that, Ya Allah, save me from an oppressor, it is important that you ask yourself, am I oppressing anyone in the process? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from both, inshaAllah. We don't want to oppress and we don't want to be oppressed as well. Those duas are also mentioned in the Quran. Then it is important to also make a dua. For Allah to take you out of a bad environment, to take you out of a bad suburb, to take you out of a city where the people are bad, the people are filthy, we need to make dua and make an effort to leave that place where the environment is bad. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ أَهْلُهَا O oh Allah, remove us from this environment where the inhabitants are bad and filthy, Ya Allah. Make it easy for us to go elsewhere where inshallah we will be able to uplift your command and be from amongst the worshippers whom who will earn your pleasure inshallah and whom you will be pleased with. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we need to also make a dua that Allah forgive our sins, forgive our shortcomings, forgive our mistakes. And at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, some of the most powerful du'as, which I'm sure all of us know by heart, we need to read the meanings. And when we are making the du'a, we need to think about the meaning. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا Oh Allah, do not hold it against us where we have made a mistake or where we have forgotten. Ya Allah, if we've forgotten something, don't hold it against us. And if we've really made a mistake out of error, Ya Allah, forgive us. Don't hold it against us. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Oh Allah, do not burden us with burdens that you have burdened those before us with, Ya Allah. We sit and read about Banu Israel. We read about the others, Ya Allah. Don't burden us with those type of burdens, Ya Allah. That's a powerful dua. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Oh Allah! Do not burden us or do not test us with something that will be too difficult for us. Do not burden us with that which will be too difficult for us, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, have mercy on us. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Wa'afu anna, wa'afir lana. And have mercy on us. Bless us in every single way. For indeed, you are our protector, Ya Allah. Anta maulana. You are our protector, Ya Allah. So help us against those who disbelieve, those who intend any form of harm against us, Ya Allah. You help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us at all times, Ya Allah. Then it is important that we make a dua after thinking and pondering over the, cre the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says the true believers are those, they look at the moon, they look at the stars, they look at the skies, they look at the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they say, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. Oh Allah, you have created all these creatures. You did not create them in vain, Ya Allah. There is a purpose for these creatures, Ya Allah. I believe in you, Ya Allah. Subhanak. All praise is due to you, O Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faqina adhab nar So save us from the punishment of the fire, Ya Allah. Imagine. Watching the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should lead us to believe that there is definitely a heaven and a hell. We ask Allah to grant us heaven and to protect us from hell. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to make a dua that you have a good death. To make a dua that you have a good death. And the dua to be made is mentioned in Surah Yusuf. Ya Allah, you are my protector in this world as well as in the Akhirah. Grant me death as a Muslim, Ya Allah. Grant me death as a submitter unto you, Ya Allah. And resurrect me with those who are pious, Ya Allah. Resurrect me with those who are good, Ya Allah. That is a dua. In Surah Yusuf, it is important we learn the wordings and we make a dua. But don't wait until you learn the wording. You can start making that dua from now in any language you want, even just in your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us our duas. Then another dua, it is important that we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He does not embarrass us on the day of Qiyamah. What did we say tonight? We said, Ya Allah, if you are to take account of our deeds, we will be embarrassed, Ya Allah. We've committed so many sins, Ya Allah. Grant us entry into paradise without reckoning, Ya Allah. Do not disgrace us on the day of Qiyamah, Ya Allah. Subhanallah. That dua is made mention of in many places in the Quran. Rabbana wa atina ma wa'attana ala rusulika wa la tukhzina yawmal qiyamah. O oh Allah, grant us what you have promised us with the messengers and never disgrace us on the day of Qiyamah, Ya Allah. And the final dua I'm going to mention for tonight is where we are meant to be asking Allah to protect us from the fire of Jahannam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan that the true believers are those who call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Rabbanasrif anna adab jahannam inna adabaha kana ghama. O oh Allah, keep away from us the punishment of Jahannam, of hellfire, Ya Allah. For indeed, it is extremely severe, Ya Allah. To be punished in Jahannam is something that is very, very painful, Ya Allah. Protect us from that punishment, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, we have heard the verses of the Quran. We have heard so many topics throughout this month of Ramadan. We have heard parts and parcel of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed in this Quran. The question I am going to be asked on the day of Qiyamah, you read, you heard, you knew, you were told, you were informed. What did you do about what you got? Subhanallah. Did you just say good talk, good lecture? Subhanallah. Powerful speech. Alhamdulillah. Good words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, in our case, the power is not in the messenger. Wallah, it is in the message. The power is not in the messenger. It is in the message. The power belongs to Allah and to His word. The messenger is a mere mortal who will be just delivering the message to you. Allahu Akbar, I'm talking about ourselves who might be delivering a message. Wallahi, we are mere mortals. Subhanallah. We are not worth the dust beneath our feet at times. Subhanallah. Yet we are standing. Allah has used us to serve this deen. We ask Allah to accept it from us. And every single one of us, we will be questioned on the day of Qiyamah. What did you do with what you received? Did you take it? 
Did you change your life with it? Allahu Akbar. The words of Allah have the power to change an individual by the click of a finger and even quicker than that. Subhanallah. Guidance is quicker than a click of a finger. You need to make an effort because Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who try and struggle and strive to come towards us, those are the ones whom we will open the path of guidance for. Allahu Akbar. You want guidance? You need to make an effort. Without an effort, there, will, there won't be any guidance except through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the mercy of Allah is what we ask because it is always the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will give us every form of goodness. Insha'Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really, we should all be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of benefit in this month of Ramadan, to make us from those who've heard whatever we've said, wherever we've heard, we are human beings, it is from us and from shaitan. And wherever we've uttered what was right, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this, we end asking one and all to remember us in your du'as, inshallah, and asking one and all, inshallah, never ever to forget the message of the Qur'an. We have only made mention of very few verses of this Qur'an. It is our duty to go into the Qur'an, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the work of the jurists and the extraction of the rules and regulations from the Qur'an and the sunnah. Remember, these are the sources of, of the sharia, the sources of the law that we have in, in, in our midst, alhamdulillah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we have tried to cover even the topic of the knowledge and the respect of those who have knowledge. For indeed, it is only if we are to sit at the feet of those who have knowledge, inshallah, that we will be able to derive and achieve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for this deen. And with this we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdih, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh.